Like KTSM 9 News on Facebook. Putting local first. From the station putting local first, this is KTSM 9 News Weekend. Extremely windy and dangerous conditions in the borderland this afternoon as winds hit 70 miles per hour. That's close to hurricane strength from knockdown power lines, damaged houses and debris on the roads. We are tracking down this severe weather. Good evening. I'm Carla Draxler and thank you so much for joining us. This powerful wind event has our entire crew all around town gathering everything you need to know. We have our meteorologist Robert Bettis in house along with our chief meteorologist Monica Cortez and our reporter Tani Davis. She's out in central El Paso, but I'm going to send things over to Robert. Now, Robert, tell us how strong are these winds at the moment? At the moment, things are getting much, much better, but we're still under that weather authority alert and we're still under a high wind warning until nine o'clock tonight. Officially, we've been under a blowing dust advisory and a dust storm warning. Very unusual warning but this is unusually strong today. Here are the current gusts. We're at 46 miles per hour at the airport, 44 Las Cruces, 48 Deming, 46 in Alamogordo. That's a big improvement from earlier midday when we peaked at about one o'clock this afternoon. That's when the dust was at its worst and temperatures actually soared. We popped up to 76 degrees today because of those winds. 70 in Las Cruces, 75 Juarez, 83 degrees out in Van Horn. Well, now we're going to go the other direction because a cold front is moving in rapidly and we're going to feel the temperatures plunge below freezing into the 20s in New Mexico tonight. Right now it's already 48 in Las Cruces, 44 Deming, 51 at the airport and 50 in Juarez. So look at the satellite radar composite. Nothing but sand and dust out of this very dry system. But as you can see, it's sweeping quickly out of New Mexico and already severe weather striking up just to the east of the Amarillo area. The good news in all this, take a look at your exclusive nine hour forecast for Monday. Now that's much better. Chilly winds, but not nearly as strong as they were today, peaking at about 25, maybe 30 miles per Per hour, no blowing dust. High temperature tomorrow will squeak out about 60 degrees, so significantly cooler. Now we have another big event coming up this week, which could bring us a wintry mix of flurries. I'll have details coming up in just a little bit. Carla. Thank you, Robert. That weather really has us on a roller coaster, but happening right now, one of the biggest impacts the wind is having on is definitely power outages. Take a look at this outage map from El Paso Electric. We're seeing areas all across the borderland without electricity at the moment, from Las Cruces down to Santa Teresa, San Elisario, and Clint. Altogether, we're counting over 20,000 affected customers. And all these power outages caused by dozens of power lines being knocked down by the wind. This is in San Elisario of Alameda and Cuadrilla. As you just saw, hundreds of people are being affected by the power outages in San Eli and over 2,000 down in Clint area. Now in the lower valley, more power lines knocked down. This happened on Alameda near Prado Road and you can see police blocking the road and some leaning power lines as well. Just overall very high hazardous conditions on the road today. And over here on the west side, I-10 eastbound exit at Porfirio Diaz is shut down because of another fallen power line. TxDOT says clearing time is until further notice and the off-ramp closure did not cause any major traffic disruptions. But these nearly hurricane strong winds did not just affect the roads over in residential areas. We could see trees falling onto houses and vehicles. So we have our reporter Tony Davis joining us live from central El Paso and Tony, what kind of damage were you able to see around the neighborhoods? 
Carla, we are here on Idalia Street in Central El Paso, and I'm just going to walk you around this scene right here. This is the trunk of the tree that fell over onto this property that was next door. Now, I'm told that the owners of this house have not been home for quite some time, so they were not able to see what happened, but the people that own this house tell me there was one person in the home at the time, but no injuries have been reported. You can see the branches just everywhere. The tree thankfully did not hit the home, but did crash this car, as you can see right here. There is glass on the floor where, where the windshield and the windows were crushed. Again, branches on the floor. Again, no injuries were reported. Police did show up just to assess the situation. Now, the homeowners do not have access to their front door. Like I said, the neighbors were not here to see what happened. We are unsure of where they are at. Now, the winds are what uprooted the tree. These are how powerful these winds are today. Now, own, owner is unsure of what his next steps are. He, like I said, he did call police. He's unsure if he needs to call the fire department. And now EP Electric says there are thousands of people without power today. And I was driving around in central El Paso. There were uh, uh, traffic lights that were out of power. There were also some trees and debris all over the streets. But like I said, we will continue to update you as soon as we know more and as we follow along on what the next steps is for this. Like I said, police were on scene and we'll let you know about those next steps. But for now, I'm going to send it right back to you, Carla. Thank you so much, Tawny. Those winds truly powerful to uproot that tree and more damage over at Isleta High School in Lower Valley. A tree snapping in half right in front of the entrance, but it seems it did not damage the building. Now, another video from Treywood in East El Paso showing a stone wall by a house crumbled underneath a large tree that fell down and over in the far east, a playground canopy completely just torn out of the poles. Now, these winds truly wreaking havoc all mm -hmm. across the borderland. Monica, I'm here joined with our chief meteorologist. You even had to come in because <laughs> I don't think we've seen this strong of a wind event. I know we had it on Wednesday. Mm -hmm but it doesn't feel like it was as strong as it was today. No, and you know what? That's exactly what we noticed. Today was a much stronger wind event. So here are some official peak gusts that we were able to register around the area. So for example, El Paso right at the airport, 70 mile per hour gusts. That is close to hurricane force winds. 71 in Las Cruces, right at 74 in Deming. That is considered hurricane force winds. And get this, San Agustin Pass at about 90 five miles per hour. So very, very strong winds registered for the borderland region. Now let's compare it to Wednesday. Just as Carla was mentioning, it didn't feel as strong and that is because they weren't. 61 mile per hour gusts is what we registered on Wednesday because of that really strong wind event. Las Cruces was only at 56 miles per hour, 68 in Deming, but we did manage to see close to 100 mile per hour gusts out in San Agustin. Pass. So as you can see, San Agustin did not escape the winds whatsoever, but we did manage to see much stronger gusts than what we saw on Wednesday today. And that's not all. The reason this happened is because that storm system that moved right over the borderland area was able to actually dip further south than the one on Wednesday did. So we got the brunt of the winds. Those winds were a lot stronger. The pressure was a lot stronger right over our atmosphere, and that's what allowed us to see just incredibly strong winds. Just like Robert said, we are keeping a very close eye on next week because there's another one on its way. And I actually want to check out this video I got from one of our weather watchers, Tony Nunez. Thank you so much for allowing us to see the winds blowing a trampoline onto the road. Come over and check this out. Truly a dangerous situation. So just make sure that you're tying down all your trampolines and any large items you may have outside on your patio because this could definitely be another scene we see next week. Not only that, but guys, whenever we do have those winds, just make sure you're tying down decorations any kind of furniture and obviously trampolines. Let's go ahead and take a quick look outside. I want to check out to those tech dog cameras around town. Thankfully, things are finally subsiding. I'm able to see those blue skies now compared to those dusty brown skies we were seeing earlier. Not a lot of wind to talk about or at least a dirt here on I-10 Porfirio Diaz. Things are moving quite smoothly in both directions. Carla?
much, Monica, for that report. And now let's take a look at this video courtesy of weather watcher Stacy Bejarano. The high winds did not spare this RV. You can see how it tipped over the trailer onto its side. Now the vehicle coming to a stop on the road or on the side of the road, and this happened earlier today in Chaparral, but fortunately no injuries were reported. And after being open for only one day, Western Playland is forced to close for the day because of the windy weather. Here's a message officials posted on the amusement parks Facebook page. The message saying Western Playland is closed due to high winds and for the safety of guests and team members. The park expects to be back open on Saturday, March 4th. All right, we'll be right back with your full forecast right Day and get 3.9% APR for 72 months on most new 2023 SUVs. Your local weather authority, Robert Bettis, the Borderlands only certified broadcast meteorologist. Well, these winds are back with a vengeance. Check this out. This is video shot by our photographer, Ruben Espinosa. Dust, tumbleweeds, trash everywhere, and all sorts of things were just flying through the air here in the borderland today. As you can see, the dust made it hard for some people to drive. I know I was struggling, and today's weather just causing all sorts of problems for people who are out and about. And check this out. This is an image that was tweeted by the El Paso National Weather Service. Uh, I think we were able to see something from uh, Robert very similar. All that yellow dust. Yes, it is all dust in our area. That's a huge amount. And the El Paso National Weather Service also tweeting out that it's not a good day to be out and about. That's for sure. It, mm. Everything smells sort of dusty as well. Mm. But let's take a look outside of our mountain camera. You can still definitely see that dust in the air. A little bit more clear, I would say, because I don't. you couldn't even see what is over there. No, you couldn't. It was just a terrible so, day. So Such it, a terrible day. It was as nasty as we said it would be, if, if, if not You're even right, worse. Robert. You uh, said it. 70 mile per hour gust, it'll do that. That's four miles per hour under wow. the threshold needed to become a hurricane level storm. So, so we basically almost experienced a hurricane. We went through a tropical storm without the Absolutely. tropical part. Well, it's kind of scary. Let's talk about getting better and let's get that dust settled down tonight. It's going to take a long time. And look at what it did to the temperatures today. I want to show you the difference between Deming and Van Horn with these wind events. Boy, it really wreaks havoc on the temperature. 60, 70, 
66 was our high today. Normal is 67 this time of year. Record 83, 1904. Look at the other high temperatures. If you were out to the west, it only made it to 55 in Silver City. But if you were in Van Horn, those gusty winds drove it up to 83, 82 at the pass. We're going to be more uniform in our temperatures tomorrow because a cold front is coming in behind this system overnight tonight. So we're going to go from dusty and warm to shivering cold winds within the next few hours. Look how we have dropped. It is 40 degrees in Silver City, 44 Deming, 48 already in Las Cruces on our way into the 20s tonight as that cold air flows in. Of course, we're still officially under a high wind warning until 9 o'clock tonight. Dust advisory in effect as well. We'll see as the winds slowly diminish through the night tonight, the dust will start to settle, but we're still hours away from that. Look at the gusts right now. We're at 46 miles per hour at the airport, 44 Las Cruces, 48 Deming, 46 Alabagordo, and 43 Juarez. That 70 mile per hour gust at the airport happened just a few minutes before 1 o'clock. So the the worst of the winds done. And I want to remind you yesterday when we talked, this system was bringing snow to the LA area, the LA area. Now, where is it? East of Amarillo. That's how fast this system picked up in that subtropical jet and just basically cruised across the whole Southwest. Hence, the winds have to get strong when a big system moves that quickly. Now, tomorrow we shift gears and thing get, things get a lot better. We'll see widely scattered thunder showers and that powerful cold front heading on into Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana. We'll be cooler, no 76. If we squeak out a 60 tomorrow afternoon, I'll be smiling, but most towns will stay in the 50s and the winds, though they will be much lighter, no dust, will feel much cooler tomorrow. Here are your lows tonight. Look where we're going. 30 Alabagordo, 26 Las Cruces, 25 Deming, 23 Silver City and 35 in Juarez tonight. Of course, that will readjust our temperatures tomorrow. 57 Alabagordo, 56 TRC, 56 Deming, 51 for Silver City tonight. 26 still got that high wind warning in effect for you Las Cruces and those winds are just going to get colder and colder on you. 57 high temperature for tomorrow. Lighter winds feel chilly in the morning, but an improvement over today. 34 low temperature at the International Airport tonight. High wind warning in effect still 60 hour high temperature. Optimistic to hit it. If not, we'll be right there at about 59 degrees tomorrow afternoon. Now only KTSM gives you nine full days of weather. We have another system coming. I do not believe it will be as strong as this one, but it will be close Tuesday. Mostly sunny skies, windy in 69, 72 gusts to about 55 miles per hour. That's going to stir up a dusty haze, but not do the damage that it did today. I'm concerned about Thursday. In addition to strong winds, we'll have a couple of hours where we could actually see a brief wintry mix of flurries on that day. This high temperature is at midnight and then we plunge down into the 30s that night. But then it gets better because it gets crazier. Look at we go right back up 60 on Friday, 70 on Saturday day and by Sunday we will be flirting with 80 degrees and we'll stay there in those upper 70s. Don't go anywhere. More KTSM 9 News.
if you do know someone. KTSM 9, putting local first. And now, KTSM 9 Sports with Sam Guzman. Sponsored by Glasheen Vias and Enderman Injury Lawyers. Well, as we've been reporting all newscasts, we are seeing severe winds across the borderland today. If you're wondering how these winds have affected some local sporting events, well, here you go. Today's horse racing at Sunland Park Racetrack and Casino was canceled due to the severe weather. weather. According to the El Paso Times, the Mind That Derby and Island Fashion Stakes, along with two other races, will be moved to Tuesday. Over in Las Cruces, the softball game between New Mexico State and CSU Bakersfield was canceled as well. No makeup date as of right now for that game. Now the big event going on here in El Paso was Monster Jam at the Sun Bowl. The high winds did not affect the scheduled start time for that event. Surprisingly, it started at 3 p.m. and should be wrapping up soon around uh, uh, right now. Well, like all of us, UTEP football will be hoping for some better weather tomorrow. The Miners are set to begin their preparations for the upcoming 2023 season. The Miners will hold their first spring practice of the year Monday morning. This will be one of 15 spring sessions the team will have in the next month and a half. UTEP says the Miners will practice every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, except for the final practice on Thursday, April 6th. Practices start around 9 a.m. UTEP says all the practices will be open to the public. Of course, we'll have more coverage on UTEP's first spring practice tomorrow. Today was a big day for former UTEP football star Roy Robertson Harris. The Jacksonville Jaguars announced they signed Robertson Harris to a contract extension. NFL Network's Mike Garofalo reported that it is a three year $30 million contract extension. It's a well-deserved one as the defensive lineman set career highs in total tackles, tackles for loss, quarterback hits, and passes defended with the Jaguars last season. Well, as we approach the end of the college basketball regular season, the UTEP men and women teams find themselves in completely different ships. The women are currently commanding a locked and loaded battleship. Meanwhile, the men are on a ship that had an almost three and a half hour movie made on it and it didn't have the best ending. If you know, you know. Yesterday, the Utah men's basketball team suffered a 75-49 loss to FAU, the Conference USA regular season champs. The injury-riddled minors only had nine scholarship players available during their trip to the Sunshine State. UTEP is ready to come back to El Paso and regroup. They have two more regular season games left on their schedule, both at the Don Haskins Center. The team currently sits in 10th place in the Conference USA standings. Meanwhile, the UTEP woman picked up a 63-55 win over FAU at the Don yesterday. That was their fifth win in the last six games. That win secured them a bye into the quarterfinals of the Conference USA tournament, but the seeding is still up for grabs. UTEP is tied with Western Kentucky for second place in the conference standings right now with two regular season games left, both of them against the top two teams in the league. Head coach Kevin Baker and his squad feel they can do something really special heading into the postseason. It's good to play the best teams possible late in the year like this, and we're going to get plenty of that because, I mean, if you look at it, we're going to play a great team on Thursday, a great team on Saturday, and then you guys know how the conference tournament is. It's always a high intensity game. It wouldn't matter who you played. It's just one of those things. So this is the time of year to be playing high level competition. These next two games will be vital. UTEP will play at Western Kentucky on Thursday, then at Middle Tennessee on Saturday. Over to UTEP softball. The Miners hosting number four Oklahoma State in the UTEP Invitational. Miners looking to pull off the upset. Upset. Top of the second, Oklahoma State up 2-0. It's Megan Bloodworth hits this one down the right field line. It's an RBI double. Cowgirls take a 3-0 lead. Later in the inning, Cowgirls still batting. Rachel Beck slaps this one into right center. Bloodworth scores from second. Cowgirls now lead 4-0. Same inning, one out. Miners need two to get out of it. Here's one. Can they get two? Nice throw. They get two. Out of the inning, UTEP still down 4-0 though. Bottom of the second, UTEP with two runners on. It's Ryland Dooner. Doomsday. That ball all the way into the mountains. It's a three-run home run for UTEP. UTEP trailed by one run after that, but that's as close as they would get. Number four, Oklahoma State would go on to take a 10-6 win over the Miners. Over to the Diamond, New Mexico State baseball was in action today. The Aggies suffered a 9-3 loss to Seton Hall at the Sugarland Classic this morning. The Aggies are still winless, and they're off to an 0-6 start to the 2023 season. That is your look at sports. We have a final look at the forecast.
Let's go, buddy. A special thank you to all our weather watchers and boy, were people taking the pictures today. Send them. We want them. News at KTSM.com. Thank you, Albert. Here comes your exclusive nine day forecast. We remain under the weather authority alert until these winds back off and that will happen overnight tonight. Much better news for our Monday, though those winds will peak at about 25 to 30 miles per hour. We'll take it over the nasty mess that we had today. 60 our high temperature tomorrow. 69 Tuesday. 72 and windy on Wednesday. Peak gusts about 55 miles per hour, maybe 60. Probably not the damage potential that we saw today, but windy certainly 72. Cold front on Thursday could bring us two hours of a possible light, and I mean brief, wintry mix as we plunge into the 30s that night. And if you don't like that, we'll just stick around because we're close to 80. What a roller coaster I love of a it. day. Yeah. Well, Isn't it great? The entire week. Yeah. Right. It is very much fun for us here in the newsroom, <laughs> that's for sure. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be back tonight at 10. Bye. Hair, makeup, and men's grooming sponsored by 